Hey guys, welcome back to Cypher Steel Forge. We're gonna do a really, really short video right now. Um, had a, a, a customer wanted a, a crochet hook. Now I had mentioned, uh, if you watch any other videos, that uh, I had just got a little mini lathe and I had tried it out and I turned some walnut for this crochet hook. So today I, I've got it forged out. Uh, it's not polished yet. Please don't think this it's it's ugly right now. Just give me time. But this is the uh, the the handle that I turned, and uh, you know it's a little rough right now. We're gonna we're gonna run it through some grits and and, and polish it up some. But I think overall I didn't do a terrible job. It, obviously, very first time ever turning anything. And, uh, but I, I think the wood itself is really nice. It's it's kind of hard to see. I'm sure for y'all it's very difficult. To, I mean, you can kind of see a little bit of a line here and there, but uh, that that grain is really, really beautiful. And I'm sure that as soon as we get it polished and, and get some wax on it, it's going to look amazing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to going to run this through and just in real time, real quick polish. Uh, just going to find my glasses here. We're going to get started, and the first thing we're going to do uh, is, is just polish the handle. And the reason I'm not taking the uh, the hook to the wire wheel yet is it, it's a nice tight fit, and the epoxy isn't set. But because I actually got a really good fit in there, we are able to go ahead and uh, work on the handle while the epoxy is set. So let's, uh, we're starting, we've already done the 200, 220, so let's do the 400 and uh, just real quick polish this up and have a good look at it. Got to get any straight tool marks. Yeah, with, so with the 400, we're really just trying to get some in the, the straight tool marks I left when uh, uh, turning it. We're going to try again. Just a little bit. And what we're doing, uh, it's probably really hard to see. Uh, I know I, I for me it was really difficult to learn this uh, you know from videos is I'm using the edge of the belt to kind of get down in those grooves and just clean it up you see the, the top of it's a lot cleaner now I ain't got the tool marks and it just kind of make everything nice and smooth it, you know it, it, we want the, the the shape but we don't want it to be unwieldy in the hand so uh, you know we're, we're just kind of cleaning the shape and and making it look nice and, and feel good though because it, it's all about how it feels to the customer and the other thing with using the edge of the belt is anywhere where we we had to grind it down and we kind of lost those uh the lines that we did want we just kind of go in and put them right back in again with that edge and, and make it all look pretty so i think i think that's going to work so let's go ahead and bump it up to the 600 and uh, again, we're just going to keep right on polishing it. I usually speed all this up for y'all, but uh, the final polish on a, on a handle really does go pretty quick. Usually it kind of goes quicker than this, but uh, you know, I got a lot of little nooks and crannies here. Definitely, uh, if you're you're shaping with the edge of that belt, or even you know rolling it with your hand, trying to hand turn it on the belt, uh, no matter how precise you think you're being, it's never going to be as like precise as a lathe because of the spinning. And so what you got to do is kind of stop every now and again and just kind of get an idea, make sure it isn't wonky to one side or the other. It's you know, a little bit extra sitting here on this one side. By the way, we're going to pretend I pulled my glasses down for that, because I should have. Uh, yeah, so that... Hmm, actually, a little bit right there. Alright, we're just going to keep popping right along here. And 
to jump up to the 800 grit and like I said now this is just by the time you get over 400 you really shouldn't be doing much shape and I'm kind of abusing the belts like that um, some wood you can uh, certainly working with resin you, you have to do your shaping at at least like the 220 grit because 80 grit 150 grit man that just chews that stuff up and then you ain't got nothing left uh this walnut really it's it's a hardwood but it, it shapes so well and uh yeah so even at the 400 grit it really eats into it and, and you know shapes it well so you know watch that sort of thing That, that's all you got to do with that. By the time you hit 800 grit, it really should be just kind of hit all the bits of the wood as best you can. And that's going to be the final belt. We're 1,000 grit. I have had higher grit belts for this thing. And, and it may have just been the ones I purchased. I don't know. But the experience I had was once it got over 1,000 grit... The belts themselves tended to be really, really flimsy and just broke when I, when, you know, I'd put something up to them and touch them and they just snap. Well, that ain't no good, so I just don't bother anymore. linseed oil real quick because uh, we always want to use a bit of linseed oil on the wood it just helps to uh, protect it and uh, keep the wood from dry rotting and uh, whatnot and yep so we're just going to put a bit of the linseed oil right on the paper towel and just rub it on there and uh let's oh my gosh yeah so that came out absolutely gorgeous let me get it down now, there's a little hole in the, the bottom of it which uh just served the purpose of uh making it stay on the lathe so i want to make sure i get the linseed oil down in there but wow so walnut it's just naturally beautiful look at that I, I can't say enough how much i i just really enjoy the natural look of, of these woods that i get to work with uh even the ones where you know it's like the crepe myrtle and you got to do a little bit of stuff hey char them and and really get the uh, the grain to stick out when, which it, it's it's less like uh forcing it and more like we're just coaxing it to show off its natural beauty and uh, yeah, that's what I feel like this was. You know, the the, the walnut kind of hid for a bit when it was being turned. It had that, you know, like the thin layer of sawdust on there. But now that it shined up, man, that is just so pretty. So we're gonna, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna take it over here to the wire wheel real quick. And uh, definitely always safety glasses at the very least. Uh, if, if you're being real, Turn that off for a second. Guys, if you've got a wire wheel, full face shield. Honestly, welding with the clear glass is not overkill for this. I have had those wires come off. Uh, I doubt you can see it, but now there's a little mark. Yep, right there it is. Got me the other day, just came off and, and grazed me. And, you know, stuck in and was able to pull it out, but, but you don't want that in your eyeballs. That, that could blind you. So, you know, safety, guys, safety. See, all we're doing with the wire wheel right there is just removing the excess forge scale that was still on there. And now, because this didn't need to be a hardened piece, 
uh, I didn't quench it. All I want is for the uh, the Ford scale that's up on the, the metal, uh, the closest, to form a nice uh, patina. And that's what you see. That's where that forge gray, that shiny gray comes from. And that that's a nice forge patina, and that'll protect it from rusting. But before I do that, I run it through some grits to make it nice and smooth, because you don't want that catching on the yarn. You're sitting there trying to crochet, your crochet hook's ripping your yarn apart. What's that all about? So, uh, yeah, we're, what we're going to do right now is... Uh, it, it really soaked up that linseed oil. So, uh, I, I, I did buy this uh, piece of walnut. So, I don't know how long it had been sitting out and drying. So, uh, certainly nothing wrong with putting on a couple of coats of, of the linseed oil. Letting that just soak in there. And then, once it looks like it's soaked up enough linseed oil... Go right over here to our nice little beeswax and we're gonna coat it poke the whole thing in the beeswax and and that's gonna be it guys i i really appreciate everything really appreciate the new subscribers to the guy who said uh, that you know you like seeing it that i that i was willing to admit i screwed up hey appreciate that man i i don't believe in hiding that, that that was a that was a challenging build. That really was uh, three handles, and uh, then I forgot about one of them. But it's all a learning process, you know. I've been doing this for about twelve years, and I learn new stuff all the time. And I'm, I constantly want to push the boundaries and and do new things. And it yeah, it doesn't always work. Hey, that's life. So uh, wow, that really. Uh, we're probably going to do a third coat of uh, linseed oil. That is really soaking it up. But man, that that is really that is that is really gorgeous. So to our customers getting this uh, this hook, I hope you like it and uh, you know like and subscribe. Check out the shop where we put new stuff up. Uh, I, I just got the EDC knife up on the shop today, which it'll be a couple days ago when this video comes out. So uh, yeah. I appreciate y'all and y'all take care.